pressed on was that condoning what Trump did, my answer was no. Been well, so vehement. You keep saying no, what you would have done. I this just want to hear from your mouth. I believe that failing to unite this country falls short of what a true leader ought to do. What you said was important. You said it on Twitter. You said it. So what did you mean? That said that if that Hunter Biden laptop story had any arguments against that one. And I want to see how it goes. All right, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. I'm Van. We are all the LFR family. Thank you so much for clicking play. Hopefully, you click the like button as well. Please make sure that you watch this entire video all the way through. That will extreme. That will really help the video move forward. And also, um, um, share it on your platforms. That will be dope too. I'm talking about on X, on IG, on Facebook. If you don't want to do any of that, just watch it. And that would be dope. All right. Reason why we're checking this video out right here is from Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly interviewed um, Vivek Ramaswamy over 11, 12 days ago. And that interview was extremely successful. I'm just now getting around to watching it myself. Looking at this video that we're about to watch, I heard something that made me want to go a little deeper. And I want to check it out with you for the very first time. I heard her mention that some conservatives or some people are, are saying that Vivek Ramaswamy is like the boot um, the bootlicker in chief to Trump at this moment when at first he was um he was against um, a lot of Trump's policies, but now it seems like he's for a great ton of them. Um, goes along with something that I I was saying that um, it seems like he's doing he's he's pressing all of the correct buttons in order to um, get Trump supporters to support him in the event of the worst case scenario, Trump going to jail or Trump not being able to run because of everything that they're putting on him right now. Y'all already know they're putting some stuff on him right now in the four indictments, one of being a Rico charged with 18 other people. And this really getting real, 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 real nasty. They're even making sure that he's not available for certain events. Um, and they're, they're lining it up with court dates and all of the other stuff. It's just a whole bunch of nothing at this point. But anyway, let's check this out together. And thank you again, guys, for clicking play. Let's get into it. Yeah. He's somebody who got very, he was openly critical of Donald Trump on June 6th, very openly critical. But now he seems to be running as Trump's chief complimenter, the, the boot chief. licker in chief to Donald Trump. And yet- Chief complimenter, boot licker in chief. Reporters on the left and the right are going back and looking at his prior statements, trying to figure out who's the real Vivek. Like, does he love Trump? Does he credit, does he, does he think Jan 6 was deeply problematic or like, what's the truth? And uh, this guy, Mehdi Hassan, who I can't stand over on MSNBC, had a very contentious exchange with Vivek. I would submit it doesn't reflect well on our friend Vivek, but I wanna know what you think. Here's what happened. You say he behaved in downright abhorrent behavior that makes him a danger to democracy. Yes, what was it so that was downright? Let's, Tell let's me what be, he did that was downright let's abhorrent. Let's actually, be, let's actually be really fair to your audience. So on January 10th, 2021, thereabouts, days after that incident, I wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal arguing that censorship was the real cause of what happened on January 6th. Which when asked in response, yeah. somebody asked me the question, are you, that, that's, that's, well, that's what I wrote. I'm giving you the facts okay. of what I said. That's a hard Understood. fact that was published in the Wall Street Journal. When pressed on, was that condoning what Trump did? My answer was no. There's a difference between a bad judgment and Understood. a crime. And, and we you're need to be question. able to tell the what difference in this country. What did Donald Trump do, no, I'm not avoiding in your, your view, that was downright abhorrent? Second time I I'll think that, that the thing that I would have done differently if I were in his shoes not what I asked, is Vivek, I would have respect. declared re-election on That's January 7th. I'll ask that, it a third That's time. exactly the thing what I would have done. What did Trump do that was egregious, quote, downright abhorrent and a danger to democracy? Can you just explain to our viewers your words? So, 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 so you're, you're mixing two different quotes, but what did I think was reprehensible about what happened that day? Look, I think that the way a true leader should have handled that situation should have been to actually say, this is me running for re-election, yeah. not actually litigating what is already passed in behind us. And I would have done things differently. That is not a crime, though, I, what I, he I did. I understand. And the reason I have been so vehement. You keep saying no, what you would have done. I just want to hear from your mouth. No, no, I would unless not, you're scared of him, yeah. why wouldn't you Maddie, say what Maddie, he did that was Maddie, downright I'm not gonna, abhorrent? I'm not going to let you stitch, okay, you're I'll stitching together three things from three different places to create a caricature. Do you want to have an actual conversation. Yes, I want you to answer my question, Vivek. Three Maddie, times I've asked it. That what is did Trump do that and, and, was and, downright abhorrent? It's a yes. simple question. 
It's your words. It's on screen. I think what did he fact, do that was downright I abhorrent? Think, I believe that failing to unite this country falls short of what a true leader ought to do. That is why I'm in this race, is to do things differently than any prior president has done them. That's the hard truth, okay? And that's what now made the him reality a is loser and a yes, the Well, the reality is none of that is a crime. Really? And the reason it. I have been so vocal, okay. the reason I have been so vocal is because when somebody actually prosecutes somebody for a bad judgment, and I've been I, clear, I, I understand he made your bad judgments, to the litigation. I would have made I different that. judgments. That's what that I asked is I understand. a distinction we have to draw. Understood. Now, before Megyn Kelly starts, to speak because I believe that they're about to speak right now. I just want to say this. Um, I watched that interview and I think um, Vivek Ramaswamy overall whipped Mehdi's ass in that interview. But there was moments like this where you had an opportunity to, to be upfront, to say why you said it was abhorrent, to just say why. Even if you wanted to just, just say, yo, when I posted that, I too was a bit emotional. I too jumped the gun a little bit, but I later found out this, this, and this. But the reason why I thought it was abhorrent at that time was blah, 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 blah. That would at least answer his question. That won't look like you're trying to skate around it. That won't look like you're you're searching for the proper words to say so that you are not in you lose popularity with Trump supporters. It seemed like he was trying to find the exact right, the exact words to say so that he not lose popularity with Trump supporters. Medi said, yo, are you f um, scared of Trump or something? Are you afraid of him? Why won't you just say what you meant when you said he was abhorrent? You said it on, tw on Twitter. You said it. So what did you mean? And he never really answered the question. I, a lot of you might look at that and be like, he did answer the question. He did. He didn't. He never addressed it. The fact that he said he was downright abhorrent. A true leader would do this. A true leader would do that. But at the same time, every opportunity that he has to speak positively about Trump, he speaks positively about Trump. But when he said that about Trump, he was, he should have stood on that. He should have backed it up. He should have said, yo, yeah, I said that. And this is what I meant. That right there will show the truth that you claim to run on. Because Vivek Ramaswamy says he runs off of truth. He says that. That's his thing. All right. But it's, it's no secret that he has an affinity for Trump supporters. He see a route of success by appeasing certain individuals. And this is the reason why I don't trust politicians. I don't trust politicians at all because they play these same type of games that Vivek himself is playing right now he's entering into this nasty dirty world called politics he's tap dancing too he really is what's your reaction to that Jesse Megan the right has a condition right now that they're gonna have to be very careful of if you don't mind I'll take a minute if you don't mind with this please, one but please our, our our condition on the right right now is desperation. We look around, if you're somebody, just a relatively normal person, and your country just lost its mind like 15 minutes ago. You don't have any cultural institutions. You can't watch a football game or put your kid in the Boy Scouts without having to talk about transsexuals. This is not the country you grew up in and now you're desperate. And desperate people will oftentimes grab a hold of something that they should not grab a hold of because it just sounds like any port, they don't, any port in a storm as the old saying go. That's Vivek. That's what Vivek is for the right. I have a theory, it's only a theory, I have nothing to back this up. I have a theory that the Trump campaign brilliantly, if they actually did this, it's a brilliant move, which I totally support, that they got him. I know he knows Jared Kushner. Vivek and Jared are friends. I think he thinks he's planted by the Trump. OK, uh, OK, not Trump himself, but Trump's team. They talked him into the race, so he'll get into the race and take a bunch of the far right wing votes away from DeSantis. That's why Vivek will attack every candidate and does in the race all the time. But he can't stop giving Donald Trump foot rubs every single day. Well, he's giving he's not giving him foot rubs. I don't I don't look at it that way. Uh, I think he's he's still being truthful. I mean, Trump did much better than a lot of these other people who were in office, especially the one who's in office right now. But it might look that way, like he's massaging his shoulders every chance he gets. Anybody paying attention can see Vivek is there on behalf of Donald Trump, whether yeah. that was designed and planned or whether he just did it because he wants to be VP or something like that. That's why he's in the race. And that's why he changed positions on things 
within the course of six months. He just looks around and sees whatever the right wants to hear, because we're desperate to hear something right now. And that's what he decides to say. And it's obviously not what he believes. But look, p desperate people, they reach out and they grab a hold of anything that looks nice. I'm glad I'm not the only one that sees that. He is all over the place. And guys, this does not mean that I don't like Vivek. I think Vivek is extremely intelligent. I think he can do some amazing things as president if you if he were given a chance. A lot of people who were given a chance weren't as nice as this guy, wasn't as accomplished as this guy, um, wasn't as you know well put together when it comes to you know um, his successes, his education, his family um, situation, um, and his story. He has a he has a great story. So there's a whole bunch that lead toward success when it comes to this young man. But if you cannot see that he is, I don't like using the word pandering, but it seems like he is doing he's doing whatever he can do to maintain favor from a certain group of individuals, and that's a red flag. If you say you represent truth, then represent truth all around the board, even if it means you have to lose support from somewhere, but being truthful, that's just something that comes with it. The reason why we're talking about Trump right now is because of truthfulness. Like he says things that are truthful and, but they hurt, they're painfully truthful. Like they, they really hurt people feelings. And he's just saying, whatever, just whatever I said it. I'm not apologizing for it. I said it, that's Trump. You need to be that truthful too, especially if you claim to represent it. Mm. I'll say, I mentioned this to my audience, you know, I have conflicting feelings on Vivek because I love his anti-woke stuff, but this, like his behavior as a candidate has been less than stellar to be charitable. Uh, and one of the things that's jumping out at me is it's, it's annoying. Like he is sort of the, the smartest one in the class who's always correcting everybody else. I know better than you do. I know I'm the only one who can do it. I'm the only courageous one out here. All the rest of you suck. And there it's, maybe you think that, maybe you think every other Republican candidate sucks and you think Vivek is, is the shining light. In my experience, the seven foot center doesn't tell you how tall he is. And yet that is exactly what you hear from Vivek on his own courage wow. and bravery. We've cut a sound bite. Listen, Megan, that was pretty good. The seven foot center don't tell you how tall he is, but come on now. That sound bite is, it was, it was nice. It was cool. But Trump brags about his accomplishments all the time. So if you've done something worth patting yourself on the back and it comes a time you have to compete against other people who have done some pretty good things and you have to win a race against them individuals. Yeah, if no one else is bringing up my accomplishments, I'm gonna bring them up. I don't see no issue with that. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for so I can say this. The climate change oh, whoa, agenda whoa, 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 is whoa, whoa, a hoax. Just... I am the only person bringing clear strategic vision to our foreign policy. Pardon Donald Trump, I'm the only candidate on the stage who had the courage to actually say it. In the conversation I'm having with you guys, being far more honest than any politician that I know in the last 10 years in this country. We have to offer- He is really braggadocious. <laughs> an affirmative vision of our own. I think I was the only candidate in this race that's been doing that so far. How do you navigate DeSantis versus Trump? So I navigated by saying that what we really need is a courageous leader. You don't think the two of them are? I don't think so. There are additional, I could have listed 25 tweets where he, I'm the only one with the courage. I'm the only one with the courage to tell you what's real. And then it will be insert some new position that he changed over the past week because he got hit by the media or by the right or by his competitor on having a, an untenable That's position. True. That's true. That's true. Yeah, look, Megan, he's a used car salesman. It is what he is. I haven't liked him at all from the very beginning. It's he just, it, it, it smells so slimy to me it always has smelled slimy to me so i'm not a i'm not a vivet guy but at the same time I understand why people are, right? I, I really do. He, because he takes a lot of the correct positions on issues now, at least, takes a lot of correct positions on issues. And people are dying for somebody that'll st step up and say, you know, hey, we don't have to pussyfoot around this. Yeah, we should eliminate the FBI. This is an organization that has become a clear and present danger to the national security of the United States of America. And they should be eliminated completely. That's, that's an appropriate position to have. And when he's the only one who's willing to say it in a race, then it does make him appealing. So I get the appeal. I just that uh, he's the first of many, Megan, who are going to come. I think 2024 is very likely going to go real, real ugly for us. And so we're going to be real desperate after that. And there'll be many, many Viveks in the future who are going to come in and sound just so perfect and say all the right things. And they're probably not going to be. Well, they're probably not going to be, but they might. They might. He's young. He hasn't done pol. He, he's he hasn't been a politician before, but he's done things that pretty much you had to do the same type of smoozing in order to in order to get funding for certain things or in order to get permission or things certain checkoffs 
so that you can move forward with um, some of his creations, some of the pills, some of his patents, some of those things. I'm sure he had to do some handshakes and hugging babies and meetings that he didn't want to be a part of. But So he's been learning how to be a politician for a long time, just through business. Um, he's just learning on the job right now. We are watching him right as we speak, try to become the politician. And one day he's, you know, rubbing your shoulders, Trump, and one day he's who pulling on him, Trump. And same thing with everybody else. If he don't believe that he can gain anything from certain people, he's not going to rub their shoulders at all, like Ron DeSantis. For some strange reason, he feel like he's above Ron DeSantis. He feel like, I came out of nowhere. He said this a couple of times, I've come out of nowhere. And up until last week, people didn't know my name. And up until this week, people didn't know how to pronounce my name. You know what I mean? And I'm already at this point point in the polls. I'm already passing this person and that person. And this person is an actual governor of a huge state. And according to their people in that state, they're doing a, an amazing job as governor. But I will still whoop his ass when it comes to who will be a better president. So, you know what I mean? It's just a whole bunch going on with him. I still like the guy. Be honest with you. I still like the guy. Um, but I don't trust any politicians. The fact that he's being caught in lies. Name a politician that has not they will all be caught in lies. They will all backslide at some point and be caught in a spot where they can't explain themselves out of it because they're politicians. They're all slimy. They're all sleazy. They're all car salesmen. I mean, um, um, use use car salesmen. That's it. Just is what it is. And not taking a shout out, use car salesmen, because some of them are honorable and and honest, and you know what I mean. Can't just say everybody's. Oh, he's trying to say that. And that's a beautiful car and it's, it will it will give you another 30 years. I got a car like that myself and I've had it for 40 years and we've only had it on a lot for five years. Telling you that while knowing that it's only a lemon and it only probably will last another 16 months at best. All right. Not everybody move with that, that lack of integrity. So I'm not going to attack them in that way. I still think that in comparison to a lot of people out there who's running, all of them people who were on stage, um, he was one of the best on stage. Sorry. And I do know also people are coming back to that Ron, Ron DeSantis train. I see it happening. I've already saw it happening. And people are trying to make him a bad guy, make him a fall guy, make um, Vivek a fall guy so that they can go back to the, um, to the Ron DeSantis train. Because a lot of you don't believe in Trump. A lot of you don't believe that he's going to get through um, these hardships he's facing right now with everyone trying to prosecute him and trying to make him look like a criminal and everybody that he works with is a criminal and all. Oh, not only that, but he's also old and he's also this and he's it's BS, man. It's BS.